Welcome to the Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. And today I'm having a look at digital kits. And I've been sent this fantastic Botanical Dreams kit from Rach and Bella Crafts. And I will leave the link below. I'm really pleased to have been invited to to have a go and I have been sent this by the lovely Rach from Rach and Bella Crafts. This is her wonderful new kit, um, all botanical themed, which is a, a big love love for me because I enjoy gardening and botanicals and growing my own vegetables and I use a lot of my own vegetable dyes uh, to, to uh, create my papers by using what I grow and using the scraps from what I grow. So this spoke to me on a lot of levels. I haven't printed out absolutely everything here because there was so much that um, uh, it will keep me going for ages. So what I wanted to do is pick out the things. And there's all this ephemera, bits and bobs, tickets, labels, you name it. It's here, it's all here. And I also quite like that background as well. Sorry, that was a bit brief. Let me just uh, quickly whiz that past you. There you go. Um, we'll come back to those. And I think I printed out two here in case I needed, in case I got carried away. Um, so I'm going to start with this because it just jumped out at me. This one in particular. Um, and I suppose these are, or could be, journaling cards. Uh, they could become tucks, pockets, uh, you could just use the image to fussy cut. Um, you don't have to use what, uh, what you think it might be for, you can absolutely go for it in any which way you feel your creative side wants to take you. So I'm just going to cut this out and then we can have a look at the detail. So on this image, I can see that we've got a layered background there with a very sweet little um, ditzy pattern. And then there will be another, that looks sort of like another crinkled paper and layered on top is a beautiful lace. So it's sort of you know, like a lace effect, and then you've got the flower. Um, so that's that's really great. So what I thought, um, because we're doing botanical journals, and this is the hashtag how to botanical, looking at how to make botanical journals and what you would add to it. I've got my journal here, um, and this is quite a shabby chic style journal, and I think that this is a lovely fit. So I'm looking to add into an already existing um, journal that I've made which now wants the ephemera and the bits and the pockets and things to go into it and so this these colour tones I think are going to suit what I've already made here um, where I've got my plant dyed papers this kit is just absolutely working with all the papers that I use and if you'd like to see my videos on how I dye my papers to get the effects here then um, you need to have a look at my other videos. If you look in my playlist you will find the uh, dyeing papers <laughs> section. Um, and this is more autumn so I think we're in summer and spring aren't we so we and there's you know this is ladybirds and things so I'm very much um, appreciating the botanical images that are available here they're really pretty aren't they everything works but I also want to so you can absolutely just you, you could fussy cut that flower out and put it down on a page and it would look fantastic. You could stick that down and that would look fantastic. You can back that with a card and stick this side and that side down and it become a tuck. That would look fantastic. If you want to go a little bit more crazy or a little bit more artistic with it, you can back it with something else because that is obviously just a piece of paper. Uh, with a fantastic image on it, it is still just a piece of paper. And so the, here at the Treasured Page, we like to make things that feel, sound, 
have a texture, something that really brings it to life. And that's what I'd like to do here. I've got some very scrunchy packaging paper that came through. Cut a bit of this. Actually, let's use that. Let's rip it, because <laughs> that's more fun. <laughs> okay. And um, I'm just I, what I want to do is create another layer. I'm using this idea of the layering up. I'm now just wanting to layer it up again. So I'm going to give it a bit, a bit of a border. And I'm going to rip using that. Hang on. How about if I paper clip it in place? There we go. Then I've got my guide and I just can tear. If I tear backwards, Let me just tear it down. Okay. There we go. And all I've created is an interesting border there. Without going too bulky, bring in a little bit of fabric, but I have got this quite fun cheesecloth here, which you can buy in the cookery section of all good department stores or cook shops, cookery shops. Um, I might be able to just, yeah, the width of that is pretty good. I've already cut some off. I'm just using normal craft scissors, nothing fancy. You don't need uh, fabric scissors for something like this. Um, just going to pull it a little bit to sort of misshapen that in those directions and then lay that down let's lay it down that way so that this because you see it's starting to slope that way so I want to go the other way with the cheesecloth and you can pull it to fray it to give you a nice you don't want this line well you might want the line you can do whatever you like. <laughs> I don't want it, so I'm removing it. There we go. Just sort of messes it up. Messy. Because when you're gardening, there's nothing straight. There's no straight lines. It's not perfect. We don't have perfect things. In the garden, in the potting shed, we have bits of old paper like that. And, you know, stuff. Will you reuse and re recycle yeah so we're thinking botanical we've got to think rustic and uh, worn especially if it's vintage which it is we're going with a vintage feel because we're echoing the lace and the doily um, now if that's a bit too much you can just that down. I haven't done any gluing. Now I can sew round and I probably will because that will add me in an extra dimension. Um, but you absolutely don't need to. I think if you have inks uh, this is a good opportunity just to take away any white edges down the sides there. And I've just I'm sorry Rach and Bella but I've just got to do I've just had this thought I've got to do it I'm sorry don't freak out <laughs> it's beautiful but but now it's more interesting <laughs> sorry I couldn't help myself got the urge and I had to go with it <laughs> it was too perfect there's nothing perfect in my, nothing perfect in my shed outside it's all it's all tatty and worn there we are there we are sorry I didn't mean to uh, just go screwing up your uh, beautiful images but you know I'm also here to uh, <laughs> relieve my stresses <laughs> And that was fun. So yeah, you can screw things out. Let's do this one as well. <laughs> oh, oh, I feel better. 
Uh, now, do I want this side or this side? Ooh, options. Um, so that gives me a lighter colour. That's the darker colour. Maybe the darker colour. I'm going to go and sew round and see how that looks. Okay, I just thought I'd bring you over to the machine as we've been seeing how to stitch on paper this week. I thought I'd bring you over so you can see my example. Um, I'm using a very basic machine. This is the Brother machine and um, oh, I've had it absolutely years, nearly 15 years now. Um, but I do recommend Brother machines if you are thinking of buying one. Uh, you can't really go wrong. You can do all the basic things if you're particularly into quilting or um, patchwork piecing and certainly paper crafts where you just want to do a simple zigzag stitch or a straight stitch. You will not go wrong with a basic brother machine and you can also buy extra tables and compartments and things that slot on. So there we go. That's my my opinion on on a machine and just so that you can see here we've got the uh, brown thread in the needle ready to go I've got brown thread in my bobbin um, already which just sits in here little plastic bobbin and um, this is how easy it is to load a bobbin drop it in and then you just feed it round that was it. That's in. Done. Easy. A sewing machine does not have to be complicated or frightening. Just make sure the threads are at the back and then they don't interfere with your project. Okay, it's even got an automatic um, uh, needle threader. It's, it's really, really quite good these days. It's nothing complicated. So I'm just uh, got a spare bit here. I'm going to drop my foot. This is the foot. This is the needle. Drop my foot. Drop my needle. I just press a button and it drops down. And then on the floor I've got a foot pedal and I just squeeze that gently and off we go. I'm not doing anything. I'm not even holding the project and the machine is pulling it through for me. There isn't anything scary to do with a modern sewing machine there really isn't there's really very little to do and it's doing it because it's being pulled through underneath by something called feed dogs uh, which just gently rotate round and feed the project through I've got a zigzag stitch and I'm going incredibly slowly so there's nice control there I'm not even doing it nothing I'm just pushing my foot on a pedal which could be my hand in my lap if I wanted to push that, that lever down if, um, if you didn't have any dexterity in your legs, feet or ankles. You know, you could still have a go. So yeah, I, I'm sitting here, hands free, and it's sewing me a zigzag... Well, I don't know what it's doing, actually. It's supposed to be sewing me a zigzag stitch, but I am doing tracing paper, so... <laughs> um, if I go push a bit harder and I go a bit faster, the stitches. No hands. At this point, it may start to turn and go. But look, I've got a line of stitches going down there. I've done nothing beyond put my foot to the floor. If I wanted to go... I would steer it by just moving my hands, just bringing the project round a bit. So we'll see in a minute. That's it. And that's the end of that. So needle up, foot up, project pulled out. You can, oops, you can see the threads just come there. Now, once upon a time, I had a needle, a, I had a thread cutter up here, which would just cut the thread but that is no longer sharp so I just take my scissors and cut it free that's all we do with that push the threads to the back switch off job done and here here are my stitches the tension's not right because I hadn't fiddled with the tension setting and I was sewing on tracing paper but what I will do now is sew on my proper project 
and the tension should be right because we wouldn't be using tissue paper. We'd be using a thicker, uh, well, two or three pieces of paper going through the machine would be would be right but yeah that's as simple as it is you just really don't need to, to think it's any more complicated because it just isn't and this is a brother innovatis number 10 um, it's pink and it's the anniversary range and honestly it's so old i i don't think you would be able to get hold of one unless you found a second hand one i wouldn't recommend that now i would just go for something more modern and affordable Okay, I've got the project and I'm just going to, so we were looking at a zigzag stitch. I might now do a straight stitch. It's a little bit more complicated because we are now operating with three layers and I'm going to need a wee bit more control. So I'm just dropping down the foot, dropping down the knee. No, I'm not. I'm changing the setting to a straight stitch which was um, very easy on a dial. Just turn the dial round. Um, dropping the needle down, we're ready to sew. It's um, going to sew round in a straight stitch. I'll probably go around a couple of times to give me uh, a layered wibbly wobbly look. I'm, I'm not going to go straight. I'm going to deliberately go this way, that way and make it a little bit more wobbly. You could follow the lines and be all neat with it, but um, this is to bring interest into the project. Just as you get to the corner, you can stop. You can lift the foot slightly and swing the project round rather than getting worried about uh, trying to turn it as you go. And off we go again. And then pivot it round again. I'm deliberately making it wibbly wobbly as I said. So we go this way, that way, forwards and backwards, over the Irish Sea, diddly dee. And then come to the corner, pivot round. That's it. And then I'm going to go round again. Overlapping the lines that I've already done just to create some more interest. Did it differently there. I didn't pivot. I'm deliberately going off the piece. Pieced? Yeah, I'm going off piece. <laughs> I'm going off the piece deliberately. And we now got myself tangled because I was a little bit too cavalier so needle up and then we just unhook that bit there yeah I mean that's all right cut it free and we'll go back and have a proper look at the table just check that I'm happy. Do I want to go around again? No, I think that's fine. I don't particularly want that thread there. So I'll just remove that. Keep my threads to the back so I'm ready to go for next time. Um, switch off. That's it. Job done. Back to the table. Okay. So here we are. It's all joined together. It's all sewn round. We've got a crinkled finish there. Um, I didn't quite capture in that edge. That's that's something that I have literally just noticed. But that isn't a problem. I shall just glue that down, which is the other way you could tackle this whole thing. You do not need to uh, do the sewing. You could just stick it down. And... Um, and then you could add on extra ribbons or elements or something that gave you that little framed look. Uh, but it's very effective. This is the back. Just tidying up any threads that I don't want. Now that could quite easily be some journaling space there. You could put an old label on it. 
or a new label that's made to look old uh, to become a neater writing space and that's the front what I think I will do is I'm going to accentuate the grunge the scruffiness the the worn the tattered the old potting shed feel this is where I feel I need to go with this so I am going to find some plastic and use my ink from my little pads here I've got frayed burlap I'm going to pick out the colors that I've got that I can see there so sort of browns brown tones and I've got an antique linen antique linen the, these little minis are quite old now so the ink I feel this one is um, old paper. The ink is slightly, not as vibrant as it could be, but uh, they are water reactive inks, so you can just put a bit of water on them. This one is weathered wood, which is a gray. So I've sort of got a yellow, a green, a brown and a gray. Okay, we just want a spritz of water over the top of that. That was quite a lot actually. Um, I'm just going to run my fingers through it so it's not too... I want the biggest splodges. And um, I'm just going to put the project down like that. Um, get the cheesecloth in it as well. Because so, that ink won't be very strong. We just have to hope the ink in my printer doesn't um, mess up the main image too much. Just use the ink on the back. And whatever was there is now on the project one way or another. I'm just going to dry it off. That would be fine to, to leave it to dry by itself, but I'm just going to um, pause the video and dry it with a, a heat gun or a hairdryer. There we go, all dried. You can see that that has definitely disturbed the image and has put some ink effect on there, but you can still see that it is a very pretty, delicate um, image. If you were finding this in a potting shed, you would definitely know that that's to do with botanicals. So we've still got the essence of it, but we're building and layering. And I have just found this die cut um, floating around. It's made with very f fine cardstock and I just thought that would be quite nice as an extra element to bring in. Um, so I'm going to put down some yellow ink which was fossilised amber and I'm just, can you see I'll just cut that out of some packaging. Um, let me use something that isn't going to get my finger completely stained. Be good if, at this point. So I just want to get some yellow ink onto the card. And then I want some green. Green moss. I know, I know. I'm mixing colours, but it's yellow. It's going to have yellow in it, isn't it? Because it's green. So that's okay. We're allowed to do that one. Let's have some water. And put some other colour on there as well. What was that? This is mowed lawn. Oh, that's a bit better. It's a bit inky, that one. Yeah, so if your ink pads start to just be a little bit dry, just give them a squirt of water. That's it. And then you can... Bring them back to life because the ink doesn't go anywhere. It stays on there. Quite clever. That's why I like them. Because of that reason. Oh, water. Project. So just cover. I'm hoping it won't break. <laughs> Got enough to do some more green. 
So I'm just using some old packaging there, nothing fancy. Now you can see how that's covered. But we go with the yellow first just to give some depth of colour. Okay, I'm going to dry it. Spare your ears, so we'll be back in a minute. Next job is to emboss that and really make that pop. Okay, so I've got the Distressed Embossing Glaze from um, Tim Holtz. I'm using Antique Linen and Salvage Patina. You could use another green. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm quite happy if I want that blue, but I'm mindful that we've got a bluey teal tone going on already, so that might be interesting. And um, I'm using Versamark, which is going to give me the stickiness required for the embossing. And I'm just going to dab the leaf die cut onto the ink pad. We just about managed not to break it so far, but it is really delicate. So I just punched this out of some marketing paper that came through the post, just junk mail. I hope that's all right, but maybe this is a better way of doing it. Oh no, <laughs> no it wasn't. It doesn't matter because we're going to stick it down anyway. Okay, so we've got two halves now because it was just so fragile. Um, and I'm just going to put the embossing glaze over. I've got the packaging paper underneath to capture all the all the powder and we'll just do this. It, it's usually a two coat process and then the top coat will be the other colour which is antique linen um, but the, the vintage beeswax by Zeth Athler um, would also be great if you have some and um, otherwise I've been um, having a lovely, successful time with the antique linen. Make a little funnel, shoot it back in the pot. And this is, um, I've fussy cut them out from from the uh, digital kit. Lots of different ones there and I quite like this one that sort of jumped out at me as being quite botanical in its nature of... Um... Oh, now let's get rid of some... shake that in the bin. Uh, so I had thought that I would just um, put that on the ink pad there and um, we'll have a look at this antique linen. Okay. So we'll do antique linen over here on this one and then I'll just blast all of them. So this is embossing powder in antique linen. Oh, I wonder if I can be clever. Whee! I've got some of it. That's quite a good coverage. And then coverage all over me. Try not to waste it because it's expensive and also you feel like you get such little pots but then a little goes a really long way so it is a good buy. I am very impressed with the, the Distress range I have to say. I've had quite a few other ones um, and it seems to be working out with the colours that I like to work with. Right, so we're back. Uh, we need another coat because it hasn't uh, quite achieved a good coverage, but that's fine. You always need to do two, maybe three coats, but usually just two. This is very good, Versamark, watermark, ink pad. Um, I haven't had any problems with that. So I'm just putting on this glaze and um, Trying to tip that back in. 
and then I'm going to go over the top with this one as well because we've done the green and uh, the patina just reacted with the ink below or certainly because it's a glaze you, it, the darker colour below shone through so that was brilliant because that just added a little dimension blasted again with my heat tool here heat gun and I'm just going to hold it gently in place with my tweezers so I've got my elements here and now we just need to build them up onto the project so bring that back and have a look at what we've got we've got this one which wanted to link um, with this one I've just got to sort of repair that so I thought that that could live on this side of the project maybe would be that element there and then um, I think I probably want a word or something just to finish it off but that's essentially what I'm going to do so I'm just going to now glue that down um, I'll use a strong glue on this one just because I think for time so I'm using a 3-in-1 Fab or a Fabri-Tac we're going to use grandma's paperweight just to hold that in place while I do this one and because I've put the embossing glaze over the top it's strengthened the thin paper that I used originally which was the junk mail so just grabbing all the little leaves and then I just want to link that up there and I think this was a Tim Holtz die cut from Wildflowers there you wouldn't notice Let's put that on there and then we do, can you see let me show you with the tweezers again how that's just aged that completely turning that into something very different I don't know if you can get <laughs> looks better there doesn't it and then we just work out where we're going to put it So this could be a seed packet. I just want a word. Um, I've got one here. It's time to sit back and relax. Yes, I think we all need to take heed of that now and again. I think we can get very overwhelmed with some of the things that are going on. And it is so important to sit down and make time to relax. And this is what this craft is all about. It is time for you, making time to just be quiet and take yourself off. Shut the door and shut the world and don't listen to the news and don't get wound up about things. Just, you know, give yourself a chance to unwind and, and relax. And this is why I've really enjoyed um, getting involved with uh, the botanical project here for... Rach and Bella Crafts and also because this is raising awareness for people with eyesight injuries and problems and um, you know I think that I suffer with um, an eye issue and I have done my whole life and I think you know without being able to see it it would be very very different and um, that's why I love the idea that the craft I've created here is more of a sensory. It's got a real texture, a real feel. You've got the shiny surfaces, you've got the matte surfaces, you've got the the softness of the cheesecloth, and um, then you've got this wonderful feel to the crinkle paper, and you can hear it. So it it works on a lot of levels for a lot of different people and that is why I am bringing this botanical project to the botanical journal challenge of how to <laughs> hashtag how to botanical 
and this is going to join my journal. I shall find a page somewhere a little bit more rustic like this. Just looking at it now, I hope that this is of interest to people and do please like and subscribe to my videos so that you can see some more ideas in the future. I just want to make the middle of the flower pop out and I'm just going to take my fossilised amber ink here with a water pen and I'm just going to add in some richness and depth to the digital um, because my ink is not going to be as brilliant as everybody else's and I know that my ink is starting to fade and run out but I can always make it vibrant by adding a little bit of extra there. So do you see is that shining out a bit more now and I think I could do the same with the blue I've got a broken china and a stormy sky so uh, just uh, bring that out a bit Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to post the photographs of this along with a few other bits and pieces that I've been doing. I'm going to put them up on Instagram, which is the platform that um, Rach and Bella Crafts have asked me to post up on. I'm scheduled to do that today and they will be up there and I'm going to have another go at a few other bits and pieces here as well and I'm having a lovely time so I have been making some crafting time for myself to slow down and allow my creative side to work in the background to help me through life's little problems and uh, challenges and if you have also found that this has been of interest to you do please give me a follow on instagram so you can see the pictures and obviously follow the channel and uh, get some more ideas and lots of things coming up i also have a video that goes up on a sunday for slun sun <laughs> a slunday a slumber sunday a sunday slowdown craft that we can just do quietly all for the idea to just allow you to make time for yourself there's an awful lot that we do um, which involves other people and we don't always give ourselves that break and if we don't it comes out in other ways and it can make us um, feel low and that's not what we want we don't want that at all we want time to process things time for ourselves and time to shine and uh, so yeah it's time to sit back and relax absolutely so grab yourself a coffee or a cup of tea uh, grab yourself some junk mail get a digital kit i'll leave the link below down for bot botanical dreams just make crafting time for you and unwind and have a go at a quiet craft such as this there's lots of uh, things that you do you don't have to do the sewing you could slow stitch it you could glue yeah. it yeah you could also add something like this to the front of the journal or a little booklet which would be quite fun to tuck inside um just zhuzhes up a little journaling card there it's another idea to add to your junk journals or your creative journals and then it would sit quite happily on a page and become a tuck for one of those lovely pockets and things so I shall do a lovely photograph which I'll pin up to Instagram which is where I'm supposed to be doing today <laughs> the platform I'm supposed to be operating from today so I'm sorry if it's been confusing me popping up here as well but uh, this was my scheduled post anyway and so I thought I'd combine the two and I've had a really lovely time I've really enjoyed doing this and um, it's it's fun to just pick something up not really know what you're going to do but allow it to develop it's absolutely part of 
part of what this is all about, uh, creative journaling and just making time to relax into a project to give yourself chance to explore your creativity and where that journey is going to take you. So here we are. It's on the page. It looks rather good. Do subscribe and like uh, the the video. Give me a comment of um, if you found that this was useful. So that will give me a bit of encouragement. I shall um, be posting more videos up. I do one on a Sunday, Monday and a Friday. Okay. Well, thanks very much for joining me today. I hope you found value here. Like and subscribe and all the things that we need to do to help one another. And I will link all the necessary links below for uh, Rach and Bella crafts and also where to get the digi kit and also the charity that we are supporting to help with the eyesight um, awareness and, and above all else guys just slow down and make crafting time for you bye bye now